Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So today I've got another video tutorial on how to write an Ethereum smart contract with the Solidity programming language. I'm gonna take you over the shoulder and we'll code the smart contract uh, step by step together. All right, so before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And if you wanna become a highly paid blockchain developer, then you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So let's take a look at the smart contract that we're gonna to write together today. All right, so this is an escrow contract. All right, so what is escrow? Well, escrow is basically something that solves the issue of trust in financial transactions by introducing a third party that facilitates the transaction, okay? It's basically a middleman. So what, what you know, what, how does this, what's this look like? So let's say I wanna buy something from you, right? There's two people in this transaction. I wanna buy a house from you, right? You have the house, I have the money. So I give you money and then you give me the house, but we can't necessarily be certain that you know this is this transaction is going to be successful right like somebody's got to act first is it the buyer or the seller right so escrow introduces a third party in the middle where they each get you know the assets and then they officiate whether each person in the you know in the uh, transaction fulfilled their end of the bargain and then they finalize the transaction okay so that's what escrow is and you can solve this problem with smart contracts on the blockchain by creating an actual uh, smart contract that acts as this agent it automates it all away and then some actual agent can uh, basically you know, uh, finalize a transaction and each person gets what they expect, okay? So you can do this with cryptocurrency, you can do this a lot of different ways. I'm gonna show you how to do it with Ether today, the native Ethereum cryptocurrency, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in order to follow along with me, head on over to remix.ethereum.org. This is the Solidity uh, IDE that you can use to create smart contracts in your browser, okay? And I've got several videos on how to use Remix, so go check those out if you haven't already. And just make sure you create a new file here on the side in the file browser called escrow.sol, all right? So first, we're gonna start off by declaring the version of Solidity that we're gonna use, do it like this, say pragma uh, Solidity. And we're gonna use uh, a caret, and say version 0.5.0, .0, all right? So then we're gonna create our escrow contract like this. We'll say contract escrow, okay? And we'll open and close our curly braces. We'll put all the smart contract code inside of these curly braces, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is um, create the escrow agent, okay? This is gonna be the person who officiates the transaction on the blockchain. This is gonna be just an address, an Ethereum address, right? An account. And this is person that, is gonna, this is the only person that's gonna be allowed to deposit funds into the smart contract and also withdraw them, right? They're basically going to, you know, make sure that the transaction was successful offline and then they're going to uh, make sure that the person who's supposed to be paid is actually paid, okay? So we'll come on, we can model the address like this, the address agent, all right? And this is the person that's gonna have all the permissions to use this smart contract, okay? Nobody else is gonna really be able to use it, all right? So let's uh, assign this uh, address whenever we deploy the smart contract, okay? So whenever you deploy smart contracts with Ethereum and Solidity, you use this thing called a constructor function like this, constructor. And this is the function that gets called um, whenever you deploy the smart contract to the blockchain. And um, it's only run once, right? It only runs whenever uh, this contract is deployed. So inside this function, we actually want to set this state variable. That's what this is. This is a, represents the smart contract state. So the agent address, right, is actually stored on the blockchain with this smart contract. Okay, the address is the data type, and agent is the variable name. Okay, so let's uh, set the agent to the person who deployed the smart contract. We do that like this: agent equals msg dot sender. All right. So what does that mean? Well, Solidity has a global variable. Um, called msg and it's got some values inside of it in this case a sender is the address that deployed the smart contract so in a minute when we go over here and click our uh, run we're going to deploy the smart contract and whatever uh, address we had selected will be assigned to uh, msg.sender and assigned to this uh, agent state variable okay so we're going to assume that the agent is the person who deployed the smart contract and they're the, going to be the ones who are able to actually call the smart contract functions okay so what does the agent do in this case? Well, they can deposit funds into the escrow smart contract and make sure they get paid to the correct person, all right? So we're gonna create the first function to do this. We'll say a function, all right, deposit. 
and we're going to pass in the address of the person who's going to receive the funds. Okay. So if I'm buying a house from somebody, this is the person who's selling the house. Okay. So this will be basically the seller. In this case, we're going to call it payee because we want it to be able to use for any scenario. We'll say address, we'll say payee. Okay. And we'll say, uh, this is We'll just, we'll just do this function for now. So inside of here, we're first going to keep track of the value that is deposited. We'll do that like this. So you int 256 uh, amount. All right. And we actually want to assign this to the value that is sent whenever this function is called. Okay. And we're going to do that also with the MSG keyword like this, msg.value. All right. So basically, we're going to send some ether whenever we call the smart contract function. And I'll show you how that works in a minute, right? So basically, whenever you, uh, whenever the escrow agent deposits funds, they're going to tell who the funds are going to. They're going to pass in the payee address, okay, um, inside of this function. And they're going to also uh, send in ether, okay? And that's going to be, that's going to be contained with MSG value. The amount of ether that's sent is kind of like a second argument to this function, right? But it's not uh, contained in this function argument. It's actually contained in the function metadata, okay? And in order to send that in, we need to make this function payable, all right? So basically that means whenever you create a transaction to call this function, you can send in ether with that transaction and whatever ether was sent with that transaction is going to uh, be contained inside solidity with msg.value and we can store that amount with this amount uh, state variable right here. Okay. Um, and so what I'm going to do is basically say, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep track of uh, the funds, right? That are sent in. So what we do is we basically do this. Okay, so we say um, we're going to create a mapping. So we'll say mapping, all right, then address is equal to uh, uint 256, say public deposits, okay. So this is going to be the mapping where we actually store all the deposits that are in escrow. So in this case, we're going to add the deposits like this, say deposits, and we say uh, payee, this is the person who is going to get paid. And we say deposits, take their existing amount, and we increment it by the amount that's sent in. And of course, if you were going to do this probably for real, I would highly recommend using like a safe math library and not just using uh, the addition and solidity like this. But I'm just going to do this for simplicity's sake. Okay. Um, so that's basically what the deposit function is going to look like. But we also uh, want to make it public so we can call it outside of the smart contract. Okay. Um, so that's how we deposit funds into the escrow account. Okay. Now we also want to withdraw the funds. So you function withdraw. All right. We say address uh, payable. Payee. So now whenever the transaction is complete, we want the escrow agent to be able to withdraw funds uh, to the payee. Okay. It's a public uh, only, well, sorry, actually, let's just do that first. And what we'll do is say you int 256 uh, payment equals deposits uh, payee. All right. So we'll read uh, the amount that was deposited previously, right? So basically, whatever's been deposited on the payee's behalf, we're going to withdraw it, okay? All right? And then we're going to zero it out. So we say deposits payee equals zero. All right, so we're going to clear out everything, all right? And then we're going to actually send it to the payee. So we'll say payee transfer payment, all right? So there we go. That's all I got to do. Basically, it fetches into the deposits account, zeroes it out, and then sends the funds to the payee. All right. So there's one last thing we want to do in this escrow account, right? We basically only want the escrow agent to be able to call these functions, right? So if the escrow agent comes in and deposits funds for the, for the payee, right? We don't want the payee to be able to come in and, and hit withdraw and then 
re- withdraw their own funds. Like that's the purpose of the escrow agent in the first place is to make sure that the trans, you know, make sure that both parties fulfilled their end of the bargain and then finalize the transaction and the funds go to the payee, right? So uh, we can do this with a modifier that basically ensures that only the agent can do this. So we can create a new modifier like this. Um, just below this mapping, I'm going to format this a little bit. Uh, just below this mapping, we'll say uh, modifier only agent. All right, I'll actually use some uh, open and close parentheses here. And inside of here, what we're going to do is use a require statement. So we'll say require msg.sender is going to equal the agent. Okay. And then we'll just return. Okay. So what does it do? Well, a function modifier is going to be uh, something we can add to a function that basically gets evaluated whenever the function's called. And that's what we've done inside here. And I'll, it'll make more sense in a minute whenever I actually plug this in. But I've defined it right here. So what does it do? Um, basically, we use msg.sender to access the address of the person who's calling the function. And basically, we want to compare that address to the address of the escrow agent right here, right? We want to make sure these two things are equal, right? That the, that the escrow agent is basically the person calling the function, right? So what this require uh, function does is it throws an exception unless it receives true as an argument, all right? Does that make sense? So think about that for a second. Basically, it, it, it'll, it'll throw an exception if it gets this, right? And it won't throw an exception if it gets this, okay? So we want whatever we pass in this function to evaluate to true, okay? So I'm going to just back up there. All right, so basically, msg.sender needs to equal agent. If it's true, require will pass, uh, and that will satisfy this modifier, okay? So um, if it doesn't satisfy this modifier, it'll revert... Uh, the entire function call, okay? So we can add that to our uh, functions in the escrow contract like this. Basically, we'll just say public uh, only agent, all right? We'll say public uh, only agent. All right. So that's how you create custom modifiers and solidity and then add them to your functions. So now if somebody else besides the agent tries to call these functions, they won't work, right? Because msg.sender is not going to be the agent in this case, all right? So that's our complete escrow contract. Let's go ahead and deploy it to the network um, and we'll test it out, make sure everything works like we expect, okay? So you can uh, select your compiler version. I'm gonna use compiler version 0.5.2, okay? Update that. I'm going to compile it, check, check for any errors. All right, looks like uh, everything's good. Try it one more time just to make sure. Yep, all good. Now we're going to go to the Run tab, okay? So inside of here, um, you can choose your uh, deployment method. I'm going to choose the JavaScript virtual machine. Basically, that's going to give you a, a, a browser uh, version of the blockchain inside JavaScript or running in your browser, okay? so. I'm going to deploy it to the network that way. So I'm going to clear out these previous deployments, select the contract, escrow. It's going to give you some free accounts here. I'm going to go ahead and choose this first one. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and refresh my page. Guys, don't do this step. I'm going to just to make sure that I have enough ether. So let's just reload the page. I'm going to zero out these accounts. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. All right, paste. Select the new compiler version, 0.5.2. All right, let's see here, done. Start to compile, run. All right, so my accounts are zeroed out. So basically, let's do JavaScript virtual machine. All right, so everything's got, yeah, all right. Okay, so let's deploy the escrow contract like this, deploy, all right? And now we can see the balance of each account is zeroed out. Looks like the deploy was successful based upon my uh, logs here. You can, I can pull this up so you guys can see. Yeah, so you can see it was fine here. All right, everything is good. So I'll pull that back down, and we're gonna interact with the contract. So we'll go to the uh, contract here. We'll uh, expand this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is actually select um, you know, the second account on the list as the payee account, okay? And we're gonna deposit funds to that account um, from the 
actual escrow agent. Okay, so I've copied the payee account. It's gonna be the second account list. You know, just click this copy button. I'm gonna switch back to the escrow account. Okay, that's the first account list that deployed the smart contract. And I'm going to deposit some funds like this. I'm gonna paste the address into this deposit uh, function argument. And now I'm gonna send in the amount that I wanna deposit. Okay, so I'm gonna put one in here inside of value and I'm going to say ether. All right, so that's one ether that we're gonna deposit into escrow. And you can see that's the value that's gonna be read uh, by msg.value whenever we uh, call this deposit function over here uh, because it's payable, right? Remember I said that you can send in ether kind of like a function argument um, that you don't see defined here. That's what I mean. So basically you can send in ether with a transaction. It's gonna get recorded. It's gonna be accessible with msg.value inside this function as we fill out one ether here. All right, so let's deposit one ether into the payee's account from the escrow agent like this. Click deposit. All right, we see a successful transaction here. Now let's try to withdraw it. But first, let's try to withdraw it, you know, from the wrong account. Let's try to withdraw it from the payee's account. Let's see if they can, you know, try to take their own funds, all right? So I've pasted that value in here, uh, the payee's address for the withdrawal as the payee, and we get an error, all right? We get an exception. That's what we expect. We don't want them to be able to withdraw their own funds, so we need to switch back to the escrow agent account in order to do this. So let's do that and click withdraw and it's successful, all right? We can verify that it's successful by uh, looking at the accounts here and see that the payee, uh, their balance is increased by one ether, all right? So a little less because they try to withdraw that first uh, amount. But um, yeah, there you go, that's how it works. All right, so that's a successful escrow agent smart contract, guys. So hope you all like this video. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And if you wanna learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, then you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.